Welcome to today's session of Chalk Talk, Bottlenecks and Bandwidth, the challenges of building a modern network. I'm Corey with the Networking and Telecommunications Group. So once upon a time, your business and at home had a very simple network to handle simple traffic like emails and web surfing and small file transfers, nothing very intensive. So if you think of your network like this two lane highway, there wasn't a lot of traffic. So two lanes was enough. Your datagrams could come and go as, as they needed to. And you didn't really have a lot of issues, even at low speeds. But as user density has grown, more people are using more network services, more applications are being served. People are starting to make use of social networking. People are starting to do more emails. They're starting to play video on their PCs. You need not only a more robust way, but a more intelligent way to move your network traffic around. So the two lane highway that you've been using is no longer adequate to all of your needs. Your emails and your web surfing has grown into lots of video and lots of file transfers and lots of social networking and lots of other things that really put a strain on the network. Not only do you need more lanes in your highway, you need a more intelligent way of telling the traffic where to go in your highway. For example, what we call prioritization or quality of service, QoS, or class of service, are all ways of telling your video traffic which lanes to use and when to get there. Your voice, the same thing. Your storage and data, the same thing. And even your wireless traffic needs prioritization. You need more intelligence in your modern network. So what class of service and quality of service does is it looks at types of data traffic like emails or file transfers. This type of, of network traffic, TCP, can be retransmitted, it can sit in a queue, it doesn't have to go right away. But things like video conferencing or even voice and phones, this type of traffic called UDP doesn't get retransmitted. It needs to go through the first time the right way. So what you need in your modern network is a way to tell this traffic to yield to this traffic and then go when it, it's turn. Another thing about legacy network architecture is what we call the three tier model. Up here, you have a core layer of switching, you have an aggregation or distribution layer, and then down here in your business, you have what we call the edge, which is where all the users sit and where your Wi-Fi and phones and everything else sits. So your largest, smartest switches exist here in the core layer. And then uh, a, a middling, layer of intelligence will sit in aggregation and most of your layer two decisions are made right at the edge. And for the sake of resilience and redundancy, network engineers would build multiple links into their topology. So in the event that a switch failed or a link failed, then traffic would continue to flow and you wouldn't experience any downtime. But the problem with all this link usage is that you end up using all of the ports on your switches just for redundancy and just for resiliency. And you also run into issues with loops where traffic can run around in circles and replicate and run in circles and replicate and run in circles until it floods your network and actually brings your entire network down. So a lady by the name of Radia Perlman, Dr. Perlman, invented what's called spanning tree protocol, which disables these extra links so that traffic doesn't get caught in a loop and it gets to its destination if that link breaks or if the network needs to reconverge and find new paths from source to destination, it can do that and continue to uh, run without uh, any impedance. But like I said, it's a waste of links. It creates redundancy. And in a modern network, you can't have those things. So HP has new solutions and new ways of flattening the topology of a network and also bringing new intelligence and resilience to a network. HP has a couple of families of switches 
2900 and 3800 that make use of what we call true stacking technology where you insert a module which is essentially a PCI card into the main processing bus of the switch and joining each switch at that processing layer. This is a very fast connection, 20-ish gigs between switches, so that inter-switch traffic moves very quickly with very little latency, and you only have to log into one switch to manage all of the switches in the stack. So instead of making changes at every single switch and, and wasting a lot of time administratively, this, this makes not only your network flatter, but much more easy to administrate. And another technology that HP has invented is called IRF, which is actually similar to spanning tree in that you're using multiple links between switches for communication purposes, and you're using the standard forwarding bus on the switch, but you're not losing any of the links for redundancy. IRF doesn't shut off the extra link. It continues to forward packets. It's, it's, a, virtual, uh, it's a virtual link, it's a virtual port. So you actually have aggregated speeds which reconverge very quickly in the event of a catastrophe where you lose a switch or you lose a link. More technology that HP has brought to the table for uh, hybrid environments or large scale out environments is the concept of modular switching. And this is very popular because you can mix and match multiple different types of interlinks within the same switch, within the same management console. You can introduce fast ethernet for your phone systems if you want. You can put power over ethernet into this chassis if you want. You can put in redundant power. You can put two power supplies in your six base switches and four in your 12 base switches. You can put in one gig. You can put in 10 gig. And all traffic on all cards and all slots run through the backplane of the switch chassis and you manage it in one place. So if you have to make changes to VLANs, to subnets, to quality of service, to anything, you log into one management console and you manage your entire infrastructure all through one switch. And you save time, not only in administration, but also setup, and you save CapEx because you're only buying one switch and maintaining one switch. So whenever people want to talk to me about how to upgrade their network or build a modern network from scratch, I always say, let's start with a conversation and have some sort of network assessment. Then we'll work on a design. We can talk to you about how we can help you install your new infrastructure and how we can extend support for that infrastructure. But all of this begins with one call, the PC connection. So if you've gotten any useful information out of this and you would like to see more, please go to PC Connection backslash HPN Chalk Talk.